rolling. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I hear you just fine. Uh, so hopefully when I post it live, it's fine because I think it's going to post whatever I hear. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so Gerard, talk to me, man. For, for some of those people out there that are experiencing a little bit of worry, how do we help them to see that there's opportunity in the midst of uncertainty? You know, uh, if you're feeling that right now, I think the number one thing is to just start asking yourself better questions mm -hmm. and really, in my opinion, you got to create space right now. Like, I know you're anxious. Like, the, the, so many of us humans, we're so used to doing. Like, go, 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 hustling. We've got that job you're used to working at. You're used to, like, think about it. Your whole, your whole lifestyle has changed now, right? You're typically on the go. You're typically doing things. So, in my opinion, right now is the best time for you to actually get rid of any distractions and take the time to start asking yourself, what is your purpose? Mm -hmm. What is your purpose? You know, what is the thing that deeply feels that, that you're called to, to step forward and, and actually start, who do you want to become so that you can actually manifest the success that you want in life, the love that you want in life, the circle of friends you want in your life? Like really start reevaluating yourself at all new levels of my life, all new levels of what I've always wanted to achieve. It's always it's always challenged me to step forward to become a new version of Gerard Adams. Mm -hmm. Like the version of Gerard Adams that you're even seeing right now on this live isn't the Gerard that I was a day ago. And that's right. because I'm constantly reevaluating what my values are, what my vision is, where am I going? What is my purpose? What is the purpose of my business? What is the purpose of Leaders Create Leaders? You know, and um, I just think it's a, now is an amazing time for everybody to start look, thinking about what is your vision? What yeah. is your vision coming out of this? And the way to do that is you got to cut out looking at what everybody else is doing. Bingo. And you got to go within. You got to sit down and you got to put pen to the paper. You got to sit down and you actually have to clear your mind and meditate. You know, you have to do these things that, that um, you know, is not easy to do because you got to like completely, you know, ask, be with yourself. You got to get to know yourself. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's sometimes it's the scariest thing. It's so funny that you mentioned that, Gerard, but, um, you know, it's like through my divorce, right? Yeah. Um, you know, people ask me all the time, how did you get through it or whatever? And, I'll, and, and you know, was it painful, whatever? And, and, and you know what was the most painful yet the most rewarding thing that I went through? Mm. Was sitting in a damn little ass apartment by myself. Yeah. Like, you know, feeling what that felt like to not run away to not go get a bottle, to not go smoke a, a joint, to not yep. go, you know, hook up with somebody, to not go right. hang out with my friends. No, to sit my ass there and right. to just feel what that felt like and to deal with the emotion of it. You know what I'm saying? Because many of us, that we, that we get into relationships. And I remember me and you talked about this two years ago. You know, and you yeah, were like, that hey, remember that? I remember that. That yeah. was the beginning of like, you know, I was there, like I was trying to be there for you as a friend. I remember when you were going through that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and yeah, no, absolutely. And and it was so interesting that the change came for me, man, because yeah. I had started to meditate. I started to do everything, but more than anything, it was Christmas Eve. I don't know if it was this year or last year. I don't remember. Yeah, it was probably this year, Christmas Eve. Gerard, you know, as a Hispanic, like Christmas Eve is yeah. like a big deal, yeah. Yeah. right? Wow. Oh it's like, God. it's like, you know, it's like the big deal. Gerard, yeah. I just sat there by myself with nobody, dude. Just me. I didn't turn on the TV. I grabbed the book. God, you're going to bug out, bro. You're going to bug out. I swear on everything <laughs> I love, bro. Me and you did the exact same thing on Christmas Eve. No way. <laughs> I swear. I just got a, a second place in New York. I got an apartment in New York. And I sat home by myself. Yeah. And redid my vision, my mission, my manifesto, my values. I just sat with myself. That's so crazy that we did the same. I swear to you, bro. That's it. That's it. That is awesome. That is awesome. But you know what, man? I, I almost feel as though it's like, you know, on a spiritual sense, that's like the graduation you have to go through. Yeah. Because if not, so many people can pull your attention. Like right now, the news is grabbing people's attention. Negativity 100%. is grabbing people's attention. And 100%. people have got to learn to just not let it bother them. And I, and I say this right now because there's a real-life example. People, listen, all of you who are our friends, who love us, I love that you're supporting us in all this because someone's talking negativity. Listen, you, you don't get in the mud and play with the pigs.
You don't do that because then you become a pig. You just let that, you just let them be. You just let it be, man. You just block it off. But you got to learn to sit with yourself and quiet the noise, my friends. That's it. You got to learn to do that. So one thing I want to just add to the audience to give a little bit of value, I just commented below. And real quick, everybody, while I'm talking, I just would love to know, I would love to know one, one thing before I tell you this. I want to know who on here on this live is struggling who is surviving and who is thriving so just comment and just know that like me and danny are here to just help All you good. no one's gonna no one's gonna judge you there's no there's no like good or bad there's just your truth so just drop your truth because i'm really curious because we're, we're that's why we're here right to just add value and to just you know answer some of your questions now right what i just commented was that i you need to become an investor and the reason and I, what, what i wanted to just mention real quickly is like and you know danny danny's one of the most prolific investors of our generation, right? But I'm not talking about just investing into assets like real estate or gold or the stock market. You need to actually mentally become an investor and be, like embody what it means to be an investor. And that doesn't just mean your money. It means your time, your attention, your energy, and your money. And you said, let's start I, like thinking about auditing yourself. How am I actually spending my time? Like if you, you would probably look at my gram and think that like, I'm probably on the gram all day. I spend, you can look at your insights. I spend less than an hour per day on Instagram. Uh-oh, now you broke up. Gerard, I can't hear you. I, yeah, I think all of a sudden, and I think a couple can't either. Gerard, how about we try to disconnect and connect right back on? And then I'm going to try to add him right back on. Let's see if this works, okay? Hang on, guys. There okay. we go. Can you hear there me we now, go. Danny? Yeah, we're back. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So what I wanted to just say is like everyone here needs to start thinking like an investor, right? I was saying, explaining that your time, your energy, your money, your attention, and then not only rethinking your vision, your mission, mm -hmm. what you're doing on a daily basis. You know, all the all those things are 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 genuinely really important, right? Your habits, your rituals, who, what, what are you actually doing every single day? And then the next thing is like, how are you investing into not only you doing the things that you need to do for yourself, but investing in a coach? Like one of the things that I realized, Danny, and, and talk to me if you, if you relate to this, bro, but yo, for 12 years, I've been an entrepreneur for 18 years, for 12 years, bro, I've tried to do it alone. Like I've always had mentors in my life. Now, uh -huh. everybody knows I'm big with mentors. Mm -hmm. But I've never hired a coach. Wow. I just hired coaches and joined masterminds over the last few years. And it uh -huh. was a game changer for me. But before that, I would just, you know, I would build relationships. I would ask questions. I would read books. I would have mentors that I had as like friendships. But like most people are, they fear asking for help and actually getting a guide. Someone mm -hmm. who actually has the results in their own life. Yeah. And, and letting them and letting them work with you like there's that's like it's it's unbelievable what that can what that can do for you. Like what would take you years you can accomplish in months. And I see you doing that at the highest level, bro. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I've done the exact opposite. I've I've okay. I for 20 years have always had a coach. Wow. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. It's kind of crazy, which but there's no right or wrong. I mean, it's just. Our, our paths have been different. And it's so interesting you say that, uh, you know, I, I see it like the matrix. It's like, if you want to learn Kung Fu in 20 years, or you want to learn Kung Fu in 20 minutes, you just download the program. And so, you know, you kind of plug into somebody who's done what it is that you're trying to accomplish. And then you just emulate and mimic whatever it is that they teach you. 
But I think the key is you got to remain humble and you got to have a humble heart, a humble spirit, and you got to actually be willing to do whatever it is that they say. And I think if you do that, man, you're going to, you're going to win. Yeah. So I'm excited for you. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. yeah, man. Thank you, bro. It's been amazing. And, and even just, and it, and it inspired me, right? Like to start actually now stepping forward, not just being a mentor to people. Cause I've been mentoring people for forever, but it's like now creating structure around actually coaching someone, right. And what that takes. And you're right, bro. Like, there's no point in doing that unless you're really committed to doing the work. It's like going to the gym. If you're not, you can get a trainer who will hold you accountable that'll show you the routine. But if you're not actually going to show up, they right. can't do the work for you. Right. So, yeah, was Absolutely. that your little man I just saw for a hot second? Yeah, there? yeah. Come here. Aaron. Say hi. hi. What's good? What's going on, buddy? How you doing? Hey, that's Gerard. Okay, show everybody how you get ready. Show them how you get ready. Show. Them. Show them how you get ready. Mm. For, come on, show them like what we were doing now. Show them. Show what? What you were doing? Did you get ready for an obstacle? Tell me how you get ready. Yesterday, I was doing the hip book like, like this. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> I love it. What are you doing? Love it. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. So, uh, so Gerard, um, so final question for you, and then I'll open it up to the audience here, okay? No doubt. And Danny, if you'd be down when we finish, I'm gonna pop on my live. If you can jump on for a little bit, that's oh, awesome. let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, you sure. Sure. I don't want to take yeah. your time. Take no, time no, 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 with no, dude. I'm, I'm chilling. I'm good. I'm good. Okay. okay. Uh, final, final question for you, man. Is, um, you know, if you could go back. Because something like this is not going to not happen again. I don't know about you. I plan to live till I'm 110. Okay. 150. Come on, Danny. Oh, okay. We got, okay. We got, okay. Got okay I got I to grow my goal here. I got to okay. grow my goal here. Right. <laughs> but um, but um, something like this is going to happen again. Especially now that I can see clearly this was not an accident. This was not an accident. Okay. And if it's going to happen again, then if we could go backwards 10, 15 years and know that it was going to happen again, what is the number one piece of advice that you would give everybody, right? That maybe either you wish you could have given yourself or that you're going to start implementing in your life right now so that when it does happen again, you're ready. Yeah. Wow. Um, I, honestly, Danny, I think the number one thing for me is like, is actually learning about, for me, just personally, like I'm not, I don't want to put this on anybody else, but the power truly of, of tapping into your spirituality. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that most people don't really grow up realizing how much that we are, we really are these spiritual beings living a human life. I don't think people know. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, and obviously, and, and bro, I grew up and, and I, I grew up religious as well. And, but for me, there's just the spirituality of truly understanding this, that like how beautiful life really is, the opportunity that we really have right now. And like truly just recognizing that we've, I would just tell myself, like, I don't think I really realized all the conditioning. And I would really just think, like really, 10 years ago, if I would have realized like how much we've been conditioned, the education system, you know, the healthcare system with food, like there's just so, so much manipulation right now, whether it's the, in, throughout the economy, you know, with the media, education, health, or like our healthcare, you know, agriculture, there's just so much of that, bro. And 10 years ago, the thing that's gotten me through and helped me elevate as an entrepreneur and just as a leader has been truly like tapping into my spirituality, bro. And like every single morning, staying with my prayer, yeah. staying with my meditation. You know, like I didn't, I didn't meditate 10 years ago, bro. No, neither did I. I thought, I thought it was of uh, the devil, quite frankly, 10 years ago. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Cause I, you know I, what I mean? Even no, 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 yoga, for real, for real. Right? Like yoga, a lot of people, sorry. No, no, for real. Yeah. But I, I'm disagreeing. Yeah. And I see how much that you even just told me, right? You were like, yo, I've grown more in the last year than probably ever. You told me yeah. ever your whole life. Yeah. You know, Gerard, it's, it's, it's like, interesting. It's interesting. There's, uh, there's a saying that says there's two ways to disconnect from the default world. And that is yoga and meditation. And I think if people can focus on those two things, two things that were alien to me and to you, I think before, 
I think once you disconnect from the default world, that's when you really start to live. That's when you really start to see and you're really awake to what's happening. And, uh, and I think that that's really when your spiritual life truly begins. Your spiritual life. Yeah. Yeah. No, I definitely, that's, that's really what, that's what, that's what brings us back, back to just love, man, and doing things from a place of love and realizing that, like, people are doing the best they can with where they're at consciously. Like, they, they yeah. you know, and um, the more that you raise your vibration, you raise your consciousness, like, you, gen you will attract that new standard. The more that you raise your consciousness, you're attracting a new standard. So the yeah. people that end up you you end up working with the friends that you have the, the girlfriend that you have or the wife you have the the business you you're you're involved in you know, everything you do is a direct reflection of where you're at internally like everything right, right. internally your reality is a direct reflection of where you're at internally so if you can start right now with healing the the parts of you that you have completely neglected because of all the conditioning, we've been feeding these wolves for years. And a lot of yeah. times it's not even our own shit. A lot of times it's from our ancestors, right? Like that's it right. runs through us. That's we right. don't realize that. Yeah, so, that's right. Yeah, I got to plug my phone in before it dies. Final question. Um, yeah. And I, you know, I, 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 hey, this is our live. We can talk about whatever we want to talk about. What, what, yeah. uh, scale of one to 10, um, w what was the impact ayahuasca had on your life? Scale of one to 10. Oh, forget about it. I would say like that. That's me in my jersey. Forget about it. I would say a hundred. <laughs> I'd say I'd say a hundred and twenty. Yeah. <laughs> <I'd> say, <laughs> you know, but I, Danny, I don't know if you have done other plant medicine ceremonies, but you know, um, just 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 this the power in like psilocybin to start small, right? The power. I mean, my I don't. I just recently did a five meo DMT real ceremony. And it was one of the most profound ceremonies of my life. Um, also, recently, I went to Peru. There's a, mm -hmm. um, an amazing organization that you should look into. It's called Warrior. My buddy, Brandon, you got to meet. For okay. Absolutely exceptional leader. And he built an unbelievable thing for the last five years. That's a rite of passage in Peru called Warrior. And you, got, you work not only with Aya, but you also work with the grandfather, which is called Wachuma, most mm -hmm. also known as San Pedro. Paper, now, yeah. ayahuasca changed my life because it activated the divine feminine. So right. I started to finally let go and like let go of that, you know, that masculine side of us that's like always out there conquering and the ego and, you know, all these, all, all that, that, that side of us, that masculine side, it, I gave, it gave me balance and harmony because that's what we all need. We need to all get harmonized to the yin and the yang. And right. ayahuasca gave me that, right? I, I, I finally dropped my guard of having to prove something to the world. That's or like it. Bl blaming things on, on, on you know, bl making excuses for the, way, the, things that, the things that happened in my relationships or with women. So I, I really activated the divine feminine. Wachuma healed deep, deep sides of me on the masculine. Because I didn't, my grandfather had been in World War II. I'm also, I have Native American in me. My, my family have been in wars and we forget that that was only within the last hundred years. Right, 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 recent, right, right. That was very recent. You know, my, my, a lot of the men in my family growing up wouldn't even say I love you. They didn't mm -hmm. show any kind of emotion. It was all warrior shit, you know, and, and a lot of it was fantastic. It built me to becoming the man that, that, that is today, the resilience that's right. innate in me. But um, I actually healed a lot of, lot of past lineage on the masculine side that, you know, a lot of it didn't even really necessarily affect me too much because my mom taught me how to love, you know, it wasn't mm -hmm. that. But we don't realize that that trauma, sometimes we need to heal that runs, it just runs through our lineage. You know, it's so funny you say that. I had the opposite problem. My, my mom really didn't show me how to love or didn't really show me love. I yeah. mean, she showed me love how she knew how, but my mom's mom died the day after she was born. And so my mom wow. grew up without the love of her own mother. So as a result of that, um, hold on, baby. As a result of that, um, I wasn't able to experience that from her either because she didn't know yeah. how, to, how to give it, you know? Papa. Yes, puppy. See, uh, go, I can't watch anything. Okay, go ask Micah. 
uh, glass mic, okay? I'll fix it for I you. Right I got. I can't <laughs> wait, bro, to to, uh, to be a father one day, man. That's, oh, like, that's so special, bro. It's dope. So it's that you. I can't wait to meet them in person and. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. No, no. dude, you gotta come over once all this is over. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. We gotta, yeah, we gotta, yeah. we gotta take our relationship and continue to grow it. Um, spend more time together. There's something that me and you are gonna do together. I don't know what it is yet, but I, all I know is that me and you are gonna do something really special together. I'm telling you, everybody who's on this live now, watch, because one thing, Danny, that I that I uh, that I love is also that like we are Latino, and yeah. there's not a lot that there's, I, I think there's like two of us. There's not that many. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's not, not that, that many, many at all. You know? Yeah, yeah. So um, I look forward yeah. to learning from you, bro. I look forward to um, to mm -hmm. serving you and just continuing to just have each other's backs, bro. For real. Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. So on that note, we're going to end. And um, I think we're going to continue the conversation on yours, right? Are you sure? You're down? Yeah, let's do it. Let me Give me two minutes. I'm going to fix his iPad and okay. he'll be happy and then we'll be ready to rock and roll. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Okay, man. Awesome. Take care, everybody. Hey, hey. by the way, Thanks, Gerard, I don't know if you know her, but um, guys, if you guys follow Water Through Skin,